You have got to stop buying these from the store and make them homemade. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today's video is super fun and delicious. We are gonna be baking up all the breads. So the, for the month of February, I challenged myself to make everything homemade um, loaf breads, specialty breads, bagels. I even made tortillas, which I've already shared on a different video. Um, I tried making all the things that I could. I did have a bunch of recipes that I wanted to try that I didn't get to, but I still think that I was pretty successful and that I did it really good. So a few of these that I made that you won't see in today's video because I've already shared them and I will make sure to have that video linked down below. But of course, my milk and honey loaf bread recipe, I have already made that. And with that recipe, I make garlic knots, I make rolls, um, I've made cinnamon rolls with that recipe. That is a really good base recipe that you can make a ton of different things with. So I will have that video linked down below because I've already shared it. So I didn't want to add it into this one, but you guys are going to see me make some Dutch oven loaves. You're going to see me make some hamburger buns, um, baguettes, let's see, um, bagels. The bagels became a weekly deal. They were so good. And I know that I've shared those. If you watch all my videos and you've already seen probably a couple of these, but there's a lot of people on here that only like my food content. So I wanted to make sure to reshare it in this video and that way it's all together and if anybody asks for it, I can just link it easily. Let's go ahead and get bacon. We're gonna start out with homemade bagels. Now I did just share these recently in a vlog, but a lot of you guys don't like vlog content. So I wanted to make sure to share it in this one so that way you guys can see it as well. Now for this one, I used my milk and honey loaf bread recipe and I just did the process at the end a little bit different to make the bagels. So this is a single batch of the milk and honey loaf. I'm gonna take and divide it up into four pieces and then each piece will make four bagels. And then I'm just gonna take each of those pieces and kind of ball it up and then poke a hole through the center, kind of stretch it a little bit and that's gonna get your bagel shape. Of course, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can make them thinner. You just make them however you prefer your bagels. But we are going to just continue doing this until we get all the dough done. I do have some water boiling on the stove to get that going and then we will dunk them in the water. Now that we got all those shaped, we are gonna go ahead and add our baking soda into our boiling water. Now I did two tablespoons of baking soda um, to my water. If you add more baking soda, you're gonna get more of that pretzel-y crust. So the more baking soda you add, the more pretzel texture you will get. Um, so I just did two tablespoons. So that would just also depend on 
what you like but that's one of the joys of baking is that you can customize it play around with it personalize it and figure out what you like best and that's one of the things I did throughout the month is I played around with different recipes figured out which recipes we liked best how we liked doing things um, and just kind of played around with you know just had fun with it and played around with it so I'm just going to dunk each bagel in this solution for about 30 to 40 seconds each side and then we will just put it over on that parchment paper. And then you can customize it once again and add whatever toppings you want. I did some plain, some cheese with garlic powder and minced onion and Italian seasoning. And then I also did some with cinnamon sugar and some brown sugar on top. The cheese ones were our personal favorite. They were so, so good. Um, but you can, and you can even add like different flavorings and cheese and everything into the dough but I like customizing it separate because you know we all like different things and so doing just a basic dough and then adding the toppings on top you have a little bit more customiza customization I don't think I said that right but we're gonna roll with it <laughs> I just baked these at 325 degrees for about 18 to 20 ish minutes um, I just kind of look at the color and anytime I'm doing bread or baked goods I just make sure that the internal temperature is 190 to 200 that will be your good go-to for freshly baked things next up is hamburger bun hot dog bun and like sub bun style rolls these were so good i will make sure to have the recipe that i used a link down below i used the same recipe for this i just um shaped them different according to if i needed hamburgers or if i needed hot dogs or just sub buns for sandwiches this is my forever go-to recipe it was so good so i'm just going to add everything into my bread machine i will have the recipe linked down below for you guys but i wanted to mention too that i feel like a lot of people don't realize that you don't have to have a bread machine to make these recipes just because you see somebody online or even you know on pinterest sharing recipes for baked goods breads but they're in a bread machine you can easily make those recipes in the KitchenAid like a hand mixer or a stand mixer sorry you can easily make those in that it's just going to take a little bit longer because you don't have the advantage of the bread machine with the kneading process and the heat and of the rising process and all that but you can easily do these recipes on your own in a KitchenAid and they will turn out just as good the dough's done we're going to take and divide this into 12 pieces and that's going to be our 12 hamburger buns And then for shaping of the hamburger buns, as you can see, I just kind of shape it into a ball. And then I flatten it out, that way it is a more bun shape. If you keep it round as a ball, you will have rolls. So if you kind of flatten it out a little bit, you're gonna have more of a flatter round for you know, hamburger buns. And then you just, if you want hot dog buns, you just shape them longer for hot dogs or a little wider for sub buns. <laughs> 
Um, and then I just, once I got these shaped, I cover them for their final rise for about 30 minutes. And then we will do a, I do a milk bath. Um, a milk wash instead of an egg wash because eggs are too expensive right now But if you didn't know milk is a really good alternative For that if you don't want to do an egg wash on any of your baked goods milk works really good And then you don't have to top these at all um, You can you know, I did sesame seeds. You could do like onion style buns You don't have to do anything at all. I chose to do sesame on this one these were really good on the um, hot dog buns. I didn't, I didn't glaze them or anything. I just put them right in the oven and they were so soft. And then for this recipe, you wanna bake it at 350 for about 10 to 12 minutes. And of course it will just depend on the size of your buns, hot dog buns, hamburger buns, or whatever the case is. This batch got a little too dark, but they were still really soft on the inside. And I'll share that in just a second. I'm telling y'all, I cannot rave over these enough. I don't know what it is about, like, when you have a simple recipe, like just basic hamburgers or hot dogs, you can definitely elevate it and make it taste way better by just making these super easy homemade buns. And these were so good. <laughs> Here is the shape of the hot dog buns on the left side. And then I did three sub buns on the right just because I wanted to see how they came out. I ended up sending Luke with the sub buns for work and he said those were so soft, he loved them and wanted them again. They were so good. Now we're going to move on to the more rustic style, Dutch oven style breads. I feel like this is my personal favorite out of everything that I baked this past month. There was a ton that I didn't get to that I wanted to that was on my list, but just out of the ones and the stuff that I made through the month, these were my favorite because you can shape them in any way. This is a basic rustic recipe that you can do Dutch oven loaves. You can shape them however you want. You can do the cr crusty baguettes. And y'all are gonna see both of those today. So this recipe, I will have linked down below. And if you watch all my recipes, you have already seen me make the baguettes but they are so good. So in that glass bowl back there, I have got my water, my yeast, and some sugar, and I'm just gonna let that bloom. And then we will add that into our flour, mix that together. It's still gonna be a little sticky. And then my bowl wasn't big enough, so I had to move it to a container. You're gonna put the lid on it a little lightly. You don't want it like completely sealed off. And then you're gonna let it sit for at least, if you can, three hours. Three hours will be way better. You'll get a nice, beautiful inside and a crust, gorgeous crust. So here is our bread dough now. Look at that, it is so beautiful, airy, and I absolutely love it. One of the things I have changed and learned over this process is that I do make sure that I put my dough like this in a bigger container. That way the dough has the freedom to rise as much as it needs within you know that time frame that it needs to sit because I did I could tell a little bit of a difference in the bread when I put it in a bowl with like say Serena wrap or like a lid where it came right up to it and it didn't have that full freedom to you know rise and bubble and just get all yeasty and delicious <laughs> Um, but that's, you know, this is, I'm no professional. Y'all know this. I've never claimed to be anything that I'm not. This is just what I've learned over the process of me baking. I have been baking for years. It is a, really a true passion and doing this over the past month has really brought that back. And I have found so much joy in this process. Um, I absolutely love it. So for this one, I am adding a little bit more flour. I just do a little at a time. That way I know it's not too tough. You want it to be, you know, just the perfect dough consistent. You don't want it to stick to your fingers anymore. And then for this one, I'm dividing it up and we're gonna make the baguettes. So I divided this one dough recipe into four baguettes. So I just cut it in half, do it again, and then we're gonna kind of flatten it out, add a little bit more flour. And then I kind of do it in the as the process of like cinnamon rolls where you take and like flat the dough out a little bit and roll it with your fingers. That's kind of how I do. And then I just pinch my ends under and we're just gonna get it put on a sheet pan. Mm -hmm. 
here is what the baguettes look like. I'm gonna take and put a couple slits in the top of each loaf. We're gonna put these in a 400 degree oven until they are baked through, nice and crusty on top. And then of course, they, you know, anywhere from 190 to 200 degrees. I'm a sucker for a rustic loaf of bread and these baguettes were beautiful. I loved the crust on them, but they were nice and soft and airy on the inside. These were a hit with our chicken grinders. Now I'm gonna do the same recipe, but we're just gonna do a single Dutch oven loaf. Now, as you see, I have it in this small bowl, and that's what I was talking about. I have done it in the big container versus a little bowl with just co you know covered it with something. And I like the bake of it better if you have it in a bigger container and let that yeast and rise let it have the freedom to rise as much as it needs to within that three hour process it does so much better so i'm going to do the same thing though we're just going to add a little bit more flour till it's not sticky and then i'm just kind of shaping it into a ball and gonna pinch the bottom half i kind of just kind of pinch it with my fingers to make sure it stays and then I have my oven preheated at 450 and we are going to go ahead and add our Dutch oven in the, put it, go ahead and put it in the oven so it can start heating up. Now that our Dutch oven is nice and warm, we're going to go ahead and add that bread loaf right in there. We're going to put the lid on it, put it back in the oven, and this is going to, it's going to depend on the size of the loaf clearly of course so it, the timing is going to change but this one took about 30 to 35 minutes i did another one that was actually a little bit bigger and um, it took like 45 minutes so just keep an eye on it once again just make sure the internal temperature is anywhere from 190 to 200. is that not beautiful like this is literally the most simplest recipe out of all the ones, even throwing all the ingredients in the bread machine, in my opinion, these Dutch oven loaves are so easy. You mix the ingredients together, sit it on your counter for three hours, and you have beautiful loaves of bread. I have made so many of these this month. I have gave them to friends, family, and they are so good. Okay, y'all gotta listen to this crust. If you are a beginner baker or have never baked before but really want to, in my opinion, this is the first recipe that you should try because it is so easy and delicious. Last but not least, I thought I would add in my friendship bread. I'm gonna do a chocolate one today. That's what you guys are gonna see, but I have made the classic, which was really good. The chocolate, I do plan on doing banana the next time around. Um, but with the friendship bread starter, you can literally make so many recipes. I've done pancakes. My sister-in-law has made like a traditional loaf bread with it. Um, it is like this starter alone can just make so many recipes. So if you get a friendship bread starter from somebody, you, you will feed it a couple days over the course of a 10 day process. And on the final day, you'll dump it in a bowl, add in your final feed, which is milk, sugar, and flour. Mix that together and then you will take out four one cup portions and put them into baggies and that is the whole friendship sharing part of it. You'll give those four starters out to new people and then you will make your loaf of bread. Or you can keep one, you know, I've been keeping some of mine because nobody wants one. <laughs> um, but you know you and then you just continue that process where you start feeding it again and that way you in 10 more days you can have you know you can make something else so. Now that we got our new starters out with the remaining batter, we're gonna go ahead and add in our rest of our ingredients to make our bread. Now you're gonna need oil, milk, sugar, eggs, flour, and then a traditional loaf calls for vanilla, but since I wanted to do chocolate, I went with chocolate instant pudding. You need two boxes. And then depending on what recipe, you can also add in cinnamon, 
you know other seasoning spices that you want um, you're just gonna mix that up and then you can either put it in loaf pans I put it in a cake pan and um, just baked it in the oven this was so good like I said it wasn't super sweet to be a cake but it was a really good you know sweet chocolate bread I think it would have been good with even chocolate chips in it or um, if I did like a little like a thin glaze on top you know like your traditional powdered sugar and milk glaze like I think that would have been good as well but that's one of the joys as well with the friendship bread is that you can you know add nuts and add fruit and add different pudding mixes and change it up and have fun with it and that's what my sister-in-law and I have been doing since we've had so many starters we've just been testing out different recipes playing around with it and just having fun I wasn't able to get a clip before it got cut into but this way you can see the inside this was so good I can't wait to test out more recipes using the friendship bread starter there is a ton out there I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video I hope it gave you some inspiration to make some of your breads homemade these were all so good and I highly recommend I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one bye guys